All right, we're back. This is um, notes 20. Well, I guess we might not be back. This might be the first video you're watching. This is going to be notes 29 of um, Calc AB. It's on improper integrals. If you're in Calc BC, this is definitely something that could be on the AP exam. We cover it after the AP exam for students who are going to get ready for the next course. Um, so improper integrals, what is this all about? Well, uh, you may never really have thought about it, but the fundamental theorem, when you use it, actually requires the integrand to be continuous on the interval from A to B. And so almost every problem that you've ever seen until now has involved that. The one sort of disclaimer that I will give to this is that uh, when you have a jump or you have a removal discontinuity, you can still use the fundamental theorem. You just use it piecewise. So use FTC, ooh, FCT, no, FTC, uh, in pieces, right? So you just do one part to the left of the jump or the left of the removal discontinuity, then you do another integral to the right. That's not a big deal. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're gonna be talking about is where infinity gets involved. When infinity gets involved, things get weird. So let's take a look at what could happen. So here's what an improper integral is. An improper integral is an integral where either f of x becomes infinite at one or more points in the interval. If it's more points, that's just like unnecessary. Um, but if there's a vertical asymptote somewhere between a and b, you're trying to integrate from a to b, vertical asymptote in the middle, what are you gonna do? We're gonna talk about what to do. So that's one way you could have it one or both of the limits could be infinity. So it could be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x. Sometimes that has a finite value and you, it, that might be surprising to you. Um, or just one of them could be, or you could have all of these scenarios where you're going from negative infinity to infinity and there's like three vertical asymptotes in the middle. Like that is so far the worst case that uh, you probably wouldn't even bother doing the problem. But we have to figure out what to do with these. So. Uh, we're gonna end up taking limits. We're gonna let limits solve our problem. Limits solve a lot of problems in calculus, right? Um, you know, we're approximating areas. How do we get better? We take the limit. Uh, we're approximating slopes with secant lines. How do we get better? We take the limit. Now we have these discontinuities or infinite bounds. How do we deal with those? We're gonna take limits. So let's look at the scenarios that we could face. So if we have a problem on the right, so what do I mean by a problem on the right? Well, you're trying to go from A to B, here's A, here's B. You're having a problem at B, right? So a uh, vertical asymptote would probably be the issue in this case. Um, so you're continuous on the closed interval, no, the interval from A to B, including A, not including B. So there's a discontinuity at B, it's an infinite discontinuity. What you're gonna do is there's only one way to approach B and that's from the left. So the integral, from a to b of f of x dx becomes the limit as k approaches b from the left. So in practice, we're gonna end up using a and b as like, it'll be the limit as b approaches whatever from the left, but uh, that's for the practice problems. So it's a limit as k approaches b from the left of the integral from a to k of f of x dx. So that's because you're approaching your discontinuity from the left because it's the right endpoint. If it's the right endpoint, you approach it from the left. Here. If the problem is on the left, so you can always work it out. Here's A, here's B. What's the only way that you can actually approach A? You can only approach it from the right. So our integral from A to B of f of x dx is gonna become the limit as k approaches A from the right because it's the only way that you can approach it of the integral from k to B of f of x dx. The, the notation that you use on these is super important, especially if you're in AP calculus um, or if you're in my class. Uh, that's where you're gonna end up losing the, the points is you're gonna mess up, you're not gonna write limits often enough, you're not gonna use the proper notation. Just do it, just learn the notation, use the notation. Um, so then we have, what if there's a discontinuity somewhere in between A and B? This is your worst case scenario. So what we have in this scenario is we have here's B, here's A, and then C is in between them, right? So C is a problem. It's probably a vertical asymptote. Um, actually, it's definitely a vertical asymptote. So the only option that you have 
is see what happens to this integral. So we'll go from A to C, but we'll approach C from the left. See what we get. Then we'll go from C to B. We'll approach C from the right. So we have to break it up into two integrals, kind of the worst case scenario. It's my least favorite, I guess I should say. So we have this scenario. And then what we're going to do is two things. So we're going to first do the limit as k approaches c from the left, which is the only option. And you're going from a to k. So k is your upper bound here. And then you're going to do it again, where you have, I'm looking for a different color, uh, maybe this color. Eh, it's basically the same. Um, the limit as k approaches c from the right, which is the only way you can if you're going from c to b. And then k is your lower bound here. So you can draw these little pictures and you'll basically never get the limits wrong if you do that. I recommend you do that. So there is this very strange property. It's really not that strange, but here it is. And this is, this is a math, it's a picky thing. And you'll see what I mean when we're doing them. But if, while you are evaluating an improper integral, you break the integral into two or more integrals, if any of them diverge, if any of them diverge, then the whole thing diverges. So you just stop. As soon as you don't get a finite number, you stop. So what does it mean for it to converge? It means that uh, when you take all your limits and evaluate everything, you get a finite number. Um, for divergence, you, uh, you use fundamental theorem, you go to take the limit. When you take the limit, you get infinity or negative infinity. That diverges. It doesn't converge on a number. So converges means that it converges on a number, and then the value of the integral is the number it converges to. Diverges means that you get infinity, you get negative infinity. Uh, either of those just means diverges. So if you have to break it up, so in particular, in this scenario, if either of those integrals that you do is infinity or negative infinity, just stop and say, because this integral diverges, the overall integral diverges. Um, people want there to be something like symmetric divergence, but it doesn't work. Um, and you will see in examples, hopefully, that that is the case. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop this here, and I'll come back in the next video, and I'll just start doing problems, and we'll see how many we get done and go from there. So I'll see you in the next one.